Good uh, afternoon, good evening. Uh, Randy Taylor back with NCSA Live. I'm here with Kevin Moon Mullen, legend, myth, Princeton University, Boston Celtics, and, and someone who has devoted his life to helping kids. And, and that's what we're all about here. And he's, he's written a book, uh, Kevin, it's called Student Athletes, A Guide for the Future. Tell us a little bit about, uh, about the book. Well, I feel like I'm on HQB. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think almost everything in my life that, that I've done uh, comes from the values, principles, lessons uh, that I've learned throughout my accomplished student athletic career. And I just had this um, kind of burning desire um, to share uh, what I've been through uh, with other kids uh, to hopefully help them make better decisions as they go through their developmental process, uh, both academically and athletically um, as well. And uh, the book's been great. It's the number one book uh, for student athletes on Amazon.com. Uh, the book has been getting a lot of good, uh, good play, good feedback, and I'm um, having fun uh, getting out to the high schools and the middle schools talking to kids. So it's, it's a guide for the future. So when you're talking to middle school and, and uh, elementary and all the, those kind of athletes, young athletes, young kids, the, the advice that you would give them for the future, which the future is high school. Right. I think um, what I found when I wrote this book is that there are a lot of lessons that are timeless and universal. And these lessons apply to student athletes, they apply to student artists, musicians, student performers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And one example might be um, I learned my work ethic uh, through my career in basketball. I basically learned how to set goals, how to put a, a plan in place to achieve those goals, and it was really through a lot of work. Uh, that really got me to where I wanted to go. Um, there's uh, many um, other lessons in the book that I think are important. I got admitted to Princeton University uh, based on my academic record. Um, I was going to go to Princeton whether I played basketball or tennis or what, whatever other sport. Um, and I feel so strongly that kids need to put academics uh, ahead of athletics uh, these days. And together they make a very stimulating and enriching environment. You have spent the day here with us, uh, we call an official visit. Uh, not an unofficial visit, we all know the difference, right? You're on an official visit and uh, you've had a chance to see a little bit of what NCSA is, the culture and things. Give, give me a little bit of that, uh, of your first impressions. Well, I think this organization um, has a phenomenal culture. It's just great that uh, many of the employees have had uh, student athletic careers of their own. Uh, they've, they've grown up uh, learning different lessons uh, through their, their career. And there's a real uh, core passion in the organization uh, for helping student athletes. I mean, the people that work here really, really care, not just about the student athlete, uh, but, but about the family. Uh, they recognize that every student athlete and every family is unique. And they spend the time, uh, whether it be uh, in person or over the telephone, uh, basically understanding the nuances and the differences uh, in each situation with each individual and each family. And to me, that's uh, extremely impressive. Um, also, uh, the thing that I like a lot about NCSA is they give a lot back uh, to the community. Uh, there's a number of educational programs and, uh, and different funding activities and things that they do for the community, which really says a lot about the core values of the organization. You have learned... Uh, a lot of your leadership and a lot of your uh, uh, skills that have carried you on from some legends like Pete Carrill, mm -hmm. Red Arbach, uh, to give some advice to college, high school basketball players, college basketball players, 
as a college recruit, college basketball recruit, something that, that you've kind of gained from these great people and your own thoughts of, of what you would help a college basketball recruit with? Well, I think that, um, you know, when I, when I arrived at Princeton, um, Coach Carrill, Hall of Fame basketball coach, perhaps one of the best college coaches ever, uh, basically said to me, Moon, you're skinny, you're not strong enough, um, you can't play defense, uh, you don't have a grasp uh, of this game, um, you can't pass, uh, you don't rebound. And I said, whoa, this, is, this doesn't sound good. He says, left. he says, but you can shoot, and I can't teach that. And he said, but more important than shooting is I see something in your eyes. I see that you want to be a player. I see that you want to get the maximum out of your God-given abilities and talents. And that coach uh, believed in me. And he actually cut some very, very talented senior players off the team to make room for me on the, uh, the varsity because I was uh, his investment in the future of the program. And, um, you know, I think it's really important that um, the student-athlete finds a coach where, where there's some spark there there's some level of trust or loyalty that the student athlete and the coach are going to make something special happen together, you know, because it, ha it has to happen in partnership with one another. We talk a lot at, at NCSA about how, uh, and you talk about the coach, how don't blame your coach, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, because that partnership is terrific, and it may be the head coach, it might be an assistant coach, it could be, a teacher or another player to have that that bond. Uh, some advice about, and you're a parent, you've had some, some kids go through different levels of school. Advice on how athletes should talk and deal with coaches? Um, I think that um, one thing that you need to realize is that um, a coach is not your friend. Uh, even the most player-friendly um, coaches need to uh, create some, some, uh, some, some distance uh, between the coach and the player um, in, a, in a relationship. I, the, the, the most difficult thing that I uh, wound up against in my uh, college uh, career is that uh, Coach Carrill very much felt that um, personal characteristics and character deficiencies actually showed up on the court. So in other words, um, if you didn't get into the perfect position to take an offensive charge with a guy barreling down on you, um, that that might be an issue with your, with your courage. So I think that... Um, the coaching relationship with the player, I think you have to really talk about not just the mechanics of sports, but I also think you have to talk about the personal characteristics and, and personal traits uh, that need to be developed uh, to actually achieve what you want to achieve in sports. It's terrific. Now I'm going to ask you a question no one has probably ever asked you. How did you get the nickname Moon? Well, um, Pete Carrill's favorite cartoon character uh, was a guy named Moon Mullen. This is well, uh, you know, beyond my time. I mean, I can only think back to Popeye, but apparently this guy Moon Mullen was before uh, Popeye. So when I went into the office, he said Moon, and then that was it. That was it. It stuck. It stuck the rest of the way. That's terrific. Well, we've got a half a day left, a few more hours left of the tour. Uh, it's great having you come in all the way from Philadelphia. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Good talking to you. It's NCSA Sports. Uh, you could call us if you have any more questions about basketball recruiting, about any type of recruiting. Uh, you can call 877, excuse me, that is the wrong number, 866-577-6272, 866 -577 Five seven seven six two seven two, or go to ncsasports.org. Thank you very much.